Hey there, my name is Dan Scott and this is one video from my larger Adobe XD course which you can check out on bringyourownlaptop.com. You can also go there to download the free exercise files and the free cheat sheet if you like. All right, enjoy the video. Hi there, in this video we're going to look at how to use Illustrator, InDesign and Photoshop all together nicely with XD. Plus we'll do some cool Photoshop stuff where we turn him into super long version. And same with her, okay, she becomes super long version. I promise it's Photoshop magic, let's get in and do it now. Okay, so working with Illustrator, InDesign and Photoshop are all pretty easy. Photoshop's gonna have some special treats at the end, so hang around for that. But working with Illustrator, we've kind of seen it before, right? We just draw anything we like in Illustrator, copy it, and jump into XD and hit paste. So I'm just using edit, copy, and then edit, paste, okay? And the cool thing about them is that from Illustrator, it's vector, I can double click on it, start breaking things apart, start playing with it. So that's some of the nice perks with Illustrator. Works exact same way with InDesign. Let's say I want to draw, I know how to draw a starburst in InDesign a lot better than I can draw it in any other program. So I'm going to use the polygon tool, give it a height and width, sides of 50 and percentage of 10. And you get this kind of, I'm going to fill it with a color. You get this kind of like starburst shape. All you have to do is select it with the black arrow, edit, copy, and then in here, go paste. Okay, same sort of principle is it comes through as vector. So depending on your skills, Okay, you might be using either of these programs. You might not be using them at all, and that's fine. But if you do, know that you can copy and paste from these programs super easy. Now, working with Photoshop, you can still copy and paste. So in here, I can open up a couple of files. Um, let's open up both Hero 1 and Hero Image 2. And I can select it all, copy, and in XD, just paste it. Okay, and it comes through. So that's an easy way. One little bonus thing I wanna show you is that this graphic here, often when you're dealing with websites, you want a really long thin, because I want it to kind of only be about, I'll give you kind of an example. I want it to be about that kind of wide, right? But I need to shrink him down. And the problem is, is if I shrink him down to fit that kind of height that I want, because I want his whole body in there, okay? Problem is I'm left with like white spaces either side. Okay, so I want it to be even smaller. Okay, so unfortunately you're kind of left with what to do with this area here. So, cool little tricks in Photoshop. Okay, the first one is we'll deal with this guy. And the first thing I wanna do is do a select all and then go edit, copy, edit, paste. You can totally use your shortcuts here. Okay, so I've got him on his own layer. I'm not really worried about this layer underneath. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm using command minus on my keyboard or control minus on a PC. Then I want this tool here, it's called the crop tool. It's about the fifth tool down, okay, in your toolbar. And what I want you to do is holding down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC, grab one of these sides. And it just means holding that option key just means it doesn't just do one side. Okay, holding down option or alt means it does both sides at the same time. And I want to kind of roughly about that sort of size and hit return. Just giving myself a little bit of extra room. Now, filling this space here, there is a magical trick. Okay, what you can do is you can go to image and go to content aware, sorry, go to edit, content aware scale, click on this. Okay, and you get this little bounding box and you're ready for the magic. Okay, we're gonna click, hold and drag this way. Uh, and you're like, no way. And I'm like, yes way. I love content aware scale. Okay, you see it made the pails bigger. Okay, but it left him intact. Hit return when you're finished. That is content aware scale. Now content aware scale doesn't work on every image. It works particularly good with this one. Let's look at another image. Okay, so let's look at this guy here. And I am going to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna to go to select all and then copy and paste. So it's on its own layer. Zoom out a little bit, grab my crop tool, seize the shortcut, hold down option, get it to be the right size. Now another good technique is, cause you can see here is like a slight gradient in the background. So if I grabbed to say the eyedropper tool, grab that and I tried to fill the background, you'll notice that like, it's just too hard cause the gradients are so weird and you know, it's not just a solid color in the background there. So what you can do, I'm working on the top layer here. I'm grabbing my magic wand tool, which is the fourth tool down. I can hold down the quick selection tool until you find the magic wand tool. Click once on the side, hold shift, click on this side. Okay, so you got both sides selected, then go to edit and go to fill. Okay, and it'll default to this one here. This is our secret weapon, content aware fill. It's quite like content aware scale. Let's click okay, hold on to your hat, click okay. Okay, come on. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna deselect. Okay, 
select deselect and look at that magic look at those blends so good okay so those are the two magic kind of like potions for when you want these really elongated images okay so edit fill okay we'll default to content aware fill or content aware scale doesn't work every time but it's definitely the first thing to try all right so i'm going to save both of these and import them in remember we can't use psd so i need to do a file save as and i'm going to do jpegs for both of these and i'm going to change these to be extended extended image two save it super high quality and we also remember we talked about before image size this thing's ginormous now so way bigger than we need it which is good okay and i'm going to close this one down and the same for this guy i'm going to save him as a jpeg and this guy's going to be called extended image nice close them down i'm not going to save them and in xd i'm going to say goodbye buddy you and you are gone i'm going to bring in my two images just by dragging them extended image one and two in we go awesome so you are there you're probably bigger than i need you now maybe you made too many panels so i might go back and redo that but do i want to nah no, he'll be fine do that send them to the back i should have flipped them over as well while i was here which I'll do now, okay, and edit, transform. You can see I can't do it because I've got to go select first. Edit, transform, flip horizontal, save, close it down, and back into XD. Delete this guy. If you're not using libraries, they don't update, so you just got to redrag them in every time. Okay, that's why libraries are handy. He's about the kind of what I'm looking to do now. All right, and the girl, she's out here. One thing you'll notice is that, watch this, if I put this just on the edge here and I click off, it disappears. Okay, but if I put it all the way out, oh, click on it, come here, and go all the way out, it kind of stays full. It's because it's not part of this artboard anymore. You can see over here, if I click in the background, I've got nothing selected. I have a home page artboard, and then I have a pasteboard, which is all of this stuff. Okay, so it's on its kind of like separate artboard. So there you go, and you're gonna go about there. For this one okay last thing i want to show you before we uh finish it's not really a super duper trick i'm going to delete these is often what i want to do is i want to have this guy here i want to have text over the top okay so i need to wash him out so i'm grabbing the rectangle tool and i'm going to draw a rectangle that just goes like here okay make sure it snaps to the bottom i might even get it to snap to this side i'm going to fill it with black i'm going to give it a border of none turning the tick off and what I want to do is I'm going to move it backwards until it's underneath this thing okay but not behind the image and the easiest way to do it is you can right click and say send backwards over and over again until it gets in the right place but you see the shortcut here on a Mac it's command open square brackets on PC it's control open square brackets okay so I send my time just tapping away at the keyboard you probably hear me tapping Okay, you can also see it in your layers panel here. Okay, I want them just above that image, but below this. And what I'm gonna do is lower the opacity. Okay, it's just a nice way of uh, dimming it down, okay, just so that you can add text, or in my case, a couple of icons. Okay, so that's working with Illustrator, InDesign, and some super awesome stuff in Photoshop. Oh yeah, side note, I have courses on all specifically on InDesign and Illustrator and Photoshop. So you can check those out as well if you want to get more up to speed with those. All right, on to the next video.